Hi folks, today we're going to talk about a very interesting module. From my right side you can see Raspberry Pi 5. This is still the old edition but it doesn't matter for this video. Here we can see a completely new board from Waveshare. It's the SP32P4 module. Actually this module contains two chips, ESP32P4 and ESP32C6 chip. The later is coping about uh, communications. It's a communication chip. It could have been uh, used for other purposes too, but in this case it's used for communication only because it's got some I.O. general I.O. ports, but uh, they are not used. So this general purpose uh, I.O. ports are not connected. Uh, you can see it uh, when you analyze uh, the schematics. Here is an antenna. This is an inbuilt antenna and there is also uh, I'll make a close-up. Uh, you will see that this is also an external antenna connector and here is a little bit um, a very small jumper. You can solder it this way and uh, then you can use the external antenna. This is just like on ESP32 CAM modules they they use and of course on some rover modules and so on which have this option for an external antenna. As you can see here this board which was made by Waveshare also seems to be strikingly similar to Raspberry Pi 5 except for some details. So First of all, we can see that we have no PCIe bus here, and it's obvious. And uh, we have different kind of MIPI connectors. These two seem a little bit more sophisticated, and they really are, because they enable connecting a camera or a display. But if you take a look to Raspberry Pi 4, which is the older model, we can see that actually, actually the same connectors, which actually means that you can use a camera from Raspberry Pi 4 or at least a camera with the same kind of cable. And now you can see that this connector is the same like this one. And this one has just been moved to the same position as on Raspberry Pi 5. And I'll tell you why, because there is a good reason why they did it. So now we have the old cabling. We can use the old flat cable and connect a camera. For Raspberry Pi 5, we need a new cable, but we can still connect the same camera. What is interesting here, this is Raspberry Pi 4, is this audio output. This is a stereo audio output. It's actually a jack audio output, but here we only have this connector. This connector is only one channel, but it's also a audio, uh, an audio output. But what is even <laughs> more interesting is this. This is a microphone, a working microphone, and this means that actually uh, now you are probably guessing what this board is primarily intended. I know that you can use either Raspberry Pi 5 or Raspberry Pi 4 for building uh, some kind of a panel that has a display, that has a camera. So you can use these options or you can use uh, USB ports to com communicate to a camera and so on. But here we have these connectors and we have no HDMI ports. Why is this important? This is important because this board is much simpler than a Raspberry Pi, but still offers almost the same functionality for some projects and it also burns much less energy. This means that it heats up, uh, it doesn't need a cooling. So for Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 5 you always need some kind of a cooling assembly except if you want to run it constantly on idle. Uh, you, you need quite a significant cooler but here it is not required. Though you could use Technically, you could use Raspberry Pi 5's 
cooler if you want. We will have four USB ports here and here. These USB ports are not USB 3.0, but these are only USB 2.0, all four of them. And there is an Ethernet connector. Here we have one gigabit per second Ethernet, and here we only have 100 megabit per second Ethernet. Uh, here we have a port that is connected to the communication controller to the ESP32 C6 module, some kind of power supply. And if you want to, we can connect here a programmer. So it is possible to change the program within this uh, communication module. So you can make it. It's not the same as here because uh, we do have uh, RP1 microcontroller that may serve similar purpose than this uh, uh, ASP uh, C6 module, but we have to know that this module is meant for communication, but this one is much more powerful. It's actually an ARM uh, based microcontroller and uh, it can uh, actually access all our IO ports and uh, USB ports, Ethernet port, Wi-Fi and so on and then it communicates to the system on chip through PCIe bus. Here we don't have some, such uh, sophistication. There is just a serial uh, connection uh, between the communication module and ESP uh, 32P4 module but this is still the same as here because we do have similar, similar communications from the module to RP1 microcontroller. So actually this is just an intermediate chip but here we don't have an intermediate chip we just just communicate so but the arrangement is strikingly similar uh, then uh, we have here e2c port e3c port so we have actually possibility of controlling a chain of external devices through the serial buses. Uh, usually you connect slow devices here, but nevertheless uh, you can do many things. Uh, and then we have this port which can be used to power and this one as well. These are both USB-C ports, but it has to be noted that, that this one uh, has uh, is connected actually to a programmer that enables you to program ESP 32 P4 module from your PC. This is a very convenient option. You just connect a USB cable, plug it into your PC, and it's already ready to be programmed. ESP 32 port has two inbuilt buttons. This one is for selecting boot mode and can be also used as a utility button in your application. And the other one uh, is used to restart or reset your ESP32 P4 module. And we have another USB port for communication. Uh, it can be either host or a device. And then we have four more USB ports for external devices. ESP32 P4 module is compatible with Power over Ethernet head for Raspberry Pi 5. As we can see, it's got the same connector on the same position it's the connector that provides power directly from Ethernet connector. But you need an interface. This is uh, inbuilt into Raspberry Pi over Ethernet head. And this interface then provides power to plus 5 volt pins on the 40 pin expansion connector. And it also connects to some ground pins. So you have actually this head powers your board through the expansion connector while it's drawing power from the Ethernet connector. It's the same arrangement as on Raspberry Pi 5. Yeah, it's here. So let's compare it. Uh, we have pins here and you can see easily that these pins actually match the pins on Raspberry Pi 4. So we have 3 volts power supply. We have all the grounds on the same place. You see this. We also have 5 volts power supply actually. And we also have these two serial communication lines on the same place on, on Raspberry Pi 5. And also you can see that we have this I2C communication lines 
also on the same place. So why not? Uh, you can achieve the same functionalities for the hats that don't use PCIe functionality from Raspberry Pi 5. So this, this is really a great thing. And this is a very interesting option also here. You can see that we have 2 watts speaker that you can plug it directly. So it's got an amplifier that can run this speaker. So you don't need any additional module for sound amplification. And now you can see here how you can plug in a camera. This is real-time clock battery connector. It's compatible with Raspberry Pi 5s. We can see a rechargeable battery for Raspberry Pi 5 here. I've also experimented with non-rechargeable batteries. All experiments were successful. And what is important here is to insert a diode to prevent any kind of charging. I guess that this kind of circuit would also work with uh, this uh, connector with uh, SP32P4 module. Uh, we can see uh, here a disassembled battery holder. Uh, if you want to add a diode, if you have a real small diode, you can also pack it into this uh, assembly. Now here you can see a number of different kind of rechargeable batteries that are available from WaveShare. And we see that they cost accordingly to their uh, capacity. ASP32 P4 model has three cores and we can see it here. It's got two high performance cores that run at 400 megahertz. And then it's got one single low performance core that runs on 40 megahertz and you can only run on low performance core but of course it has to be noted that the raspberry pi 5 has a 64-bit cores but here we only have 32-bit and uh, you can see you have much more memory available if you're running this high performance core and if you compare all this to raspberry pi we know that this uh, numbers are funny from what Raspberry Pi 5 is capable of. You see this memory, how big it is. But here you don't have some kind of memory. You can only stick an SD card in and uh, you can run an operating system from it, but uh, nothing uh, as powerful as this. Uh, not a sophisticated graphics operating system, but you can still achieve the Similar effect, it depends on you what, what actually you need, uh, how sophisticated uh, operating system you need. But for running a panel with gauges or something, uh, it's probably not needed. So, a really interesting board. And is there anything more to tell about this board? Yeah, these are dimensions. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, you will see that. It is so similar to Raspberry Pi. It, this is this is these are the same dimensions as Raspberry Pi 5. And you see here, it's uh, actually the same sized, so you can use the same case. Thank you for watching. If you've liked this video, please press like and subscribe buttons. See you in the next video. Bye.